Hey everyone, today I want to talk about finding all trig ratios when you're given one of them, and sometimes when you're given none of them. So let's remember that trig values or trig ratios can be exact or approximate. Now in this particular video, in this particular concept, they've got to be exact. Now oftentimes you'll be given one of those ratios, and you'll be given that ratio or the question itself without a picture. The biggest key is to draw a triangle, and then we can use what we know of the ratios to help us out. Here they are again, the big three, sine, cosine, and tangent, and then the new three, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Now, remember, O and H, or O over H for sine, is exactly the opposite for cosecant, H over O. That's gonna be really, really helpful for us moving forward. So let's jump right into some examples. Example one. Given sine of theta is five over seven, find all of the other trig ratios. So we have to find five more. Now, we can do this two different ways. We can just do this off of memory, off of the ratios that we knew from before, or we can draw a picture. I particularly like to draw pictures. It makes it a little bit easier to solve. Now, our sine theta, we can draw a triangle. Now, it doesn't actually matter too much where those triangles are and what those values are when they're both positive. It's when things get negative that they get a little bit silly. So I'm gonna draw my right triangle and theta is gonna be at this location here. It's telling us that sine of theta is five over seven. Well, remember what sine is. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna label the opposite side as five and the hypotenuse is seven. Now, we could certainly find out one more of these trig ratios just the inverse of sine, but I need all six combined. So we're gonna to need to find this value here, and we're gonna do that using the Pythagorean theorem. So we can label five as a and seven as c, and remember the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Five squared plus, we'll label this as x, because we don't know that side, and that's gonna equal seven squared. 25 oops, plus x squared equals 49, We'll subtract by 25 on both sides, which will give us x squared equals 24. Now, I'm gonna square up both sides, but remember we're talking about exact values. Radicals are fine here. Anything else is not really gonna help us. So I'm actually gonna have to simplify that radical and not get a decimal. When I simplify this, old school factoring, right? I know it can be the square root of four times the square root of six, but the square root of four is two. So x is gonna be two root six, meaning our empty side here, or our unknown side, is gonna be two root six. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this, put that there, and we'll take the next step. Okay, so now that I have all three sides of my right triangle, I can go ahead and start filling in the rest of the trig ratios that I need. We knew that sine of theta was five over seven. Now we can very easily tell what the inverse of that is by just reversing it. So sine's inverse is cosecant. So cosecant of theta is gonna be exactly the opposite of this. It's gonna be hypotenuse over opposite. Seven over five, or I can just very much look at that fraction and get that. So there we go. Now let's go back to the big three and find cosine. Well, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, again, we are gonna keep the same theta measurement, so everything starts in reference to this. So the adjacent side is two root six, and the hypotenuse is seven. So our cosine value is gonna be two root six over seven. Now, we can easily find cosine's inverse, secant, by just flipping this over. Because if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. It's gonna be a little bit of a mess with this, and you'll see why in a second. So we're gonna have seven over two root six, which we can't have. We can't leave it like that. And the reason is because no radicals can stay in the denominator. So we're gonna rationalize the denominator and go from there. I don't have to rationalize the entire denominator. I can just rationalize the radical part. So we'll multiply by root six over six. This will give us seven root six over two times six, right? Because if the two stays, but root six times root six is just six because root six times root six is the square root of 36, which is just six. So save yourself some time and just go ahead and multiply it out like this. So we're gonna end up being here seven root six, that was a mess, <laughs> over 12. I am not able to simplify that because seven over 12 does not simplify. So we've found secant and it's gonna be something that I'm gonna erase and write neater. <laughs> 
Here we're going to have 7 root 6 over 12, and that's going to be my secant value. Now, let's go ahead and find the other two that we're missing, because again, there's three here, and the fourth one was sine. The other two we're missing is tangent and cotangent. Well, we know that tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, again, in reference to our theta, opposite is 5, and adjacent is 2 root 6. So, we've got 5 over 2 root 6. But again, math has not helped us out. We've got to rationalize that denominator. I'm going to multiply by root 6 over root 6. I'll end up with 5 root 6 over, again, that 12 from before. Cannot simplify. That's my tangent value or my tangent ratio with these measurements. Cotangent's going to be a little bit easier, I think, because if we needed opposite over adjacent for tangent, cotangent is just the opposite. It's adjacent over opposite. So I'm going to be left with 2 root 6 over 5. Now, I don't have to simplify that. There's no radical in the denominator, so we're done with that. Let's try another one. Here's example two. Given secant of theta, which is 5 over 3, find all other trig ratios. Okay. Well, again, just like example one, we're going to go ahead and draw a right triangle, label theta, and we're going to represent that ratio how we know. Now, representing secant's a little bit hard unless you know the formula. Secant is the inverse of cosine, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that means that 5 is going to be the hypotenuse, and adjacent side to theta is going to be 3. So we can very easily, without even finding out the other side measurement of this right triangle, we can easily tell what cosine is. And cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, is just the reverse of secant. If they're inverses in every format, that means they also must be inverses in terms of the fraction itself, right? We're just flipping that fraction over to get cosine. Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit in terms of Pythagorean theorem. This is a Pythagorean triple, so the other side is 4. Now we can find the other four measurements in our trig ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so five, uh, 4 over 5, which means that sine's inverse cosecant is just the reverse of that, 5 over 4. Tangent of theta, which we know is very visible, I'm just making sure, is opposite over adjacent, opposite of 4 and adjacent of 3, which means that cotangent, the inverse of tangent, has to be the exact opposite of that, which is adjacent over opposite, 3 over 4. Let's move on to something a little more challenging. Okay. Remember how I said before it didn't matter how you drew the triangle because we could still label everything? Well, that rule kind of goes in the trash can when we have a negative value somewhere. Now remember, the negative value doesn't actually mean negative distance, it just means it's a different way or the location of that triangle is represented differently on the unit circle. So let's take a look at number three. Cosine of theta is negative two over three. We can still do this and this is okay. It just remember where all of those negative values lie on the unit circle. Remember that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, where is this value going to be negative? Well, cosine values can't be negative in the first quadrant, but they can be negative values in quadrant two, and they certainly can be negative values in quadrant three. So let's go ahead and draw our triangle with what we know. Because the numerator itself here is negative, that means our triangle should be in quadrant two of our unit circle, which just means this. If this represents the center of the unit circle, I'm just going to draw my right triangle this way because now I can represent my right triangle in quadrant two, which makes a lot more sense with that negative value. So cosine of theta is adjacent, which this is going to be my negative two, and then my hypotenuse value is going to be three. Now, what does that really mean for the other values? It's necessary for the other values, but let's take a look one step at a time, huh? So if cosine of theta is negative two over three, we can very easily find its inverse, which is secant, which means that secant of theta must be the exact opposite of that. So it's gonna be negative three over two. Makes sense, right? Because secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Now, the negative sign, I just put the three, but really and truly, it doesn't matter where it belongs because it really would just go like right off shoot of this here. Okay? So. Let's find the other value for uh, the A or the B side. And we'll use Pythagorean theorem for that. Now again, because we're in quadrant two, this value is a Y value and it must be positive because if cosine's X value or cosine's adjacent side is negative, this has to be a positive side because the unit circle goes like this, right? So let's do that. Let's say negative two is A, we're trying to find B, and three is C. So negative two squared plus 
b squared equals 3 squared. So we're going to have 4 plus b squared equals 9. My marker is dying out. We'll subtract 4 on both sides. And b squared is going to equal 5. Now, 5 is an irrational number. So the square root of 5 is just going to be what we're looking for for the b side. So I'm going to go ahead and erase b. b is going to be the square root of 5. All right. Now we can find the other three values. So we have cosine and secant. Let's go right to sine because that's our another big three. So sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So we've got root 5 over 3. Sine's inverse is cosecant. So cosecant of theta is going to be just the reverse of this, 3 over root 5. But again, you guessed it. I can't have a radical in the denominator. This is certainly a little bit easier to memorize and do. I'm going to multiply by root 5 over root 5, which is going to give me 3 root 5 over 5. Can't simplify, done deal. Let's go back to the last of our big three functions, tangent. And tan is opposite over adjacent. So we have opposite over adjacent, which is going to be negative root 5 over 2. And again, the negative can be right to the side. It doesn't necessarily have to be with um, any of those values in particular. We just know that the value of tangent needs to be negative on the side because our cosine value had a negative value. Okay. That means that cotangent, the last of our six functions, has to be the inverse of this. So we're going to have a negative 2 over root 5. But just like cosecant, I need to multiply by root 5 on bottom and top because I have to get rid of that denominator with a radical in it. This is going to be a negative 2 root 5 over 5. Okay? And that's done for that one. A little bit more challenging because of the negative, but as long as you understand that that negative kind of sits there for a little bit, and its position on the unit circle, you're good. So remember about this video, number one, exact values mean you need to know your trig ratios. The two sets of values that I put up before, the big three, Sokotoa, and the other three, which doesn't actually have a name to it. But if you wanted to make a name, do it and let me know. Number two, we cannot ever leave radicals in the denominator. You must always rationalize. Anything that would be, for example, one over the square root of 13, I know you mean well, it's totally wrong. Please make sure that you rationalize the denominator so you don't get marked off points on any kind of quiz or test your teacher gives you. And then number three, drawing triangles will help out extensively with this process. So what? You don't get a right triangle. Make one. If the positive value is something that you're given, you're in good shape. If you have a negative value though, just remember where that is going to lie on the unit circle and go from there. Because a negative value, although doesn't mean negative distance, it just means how far it is on the other side of your unit circle or your origin. See you next time.